So far, when we have looked at algebraic sets under the Zariski topology, we've mainly focused on their closed sets. This is natural because those are the algebraic sets, the one you define in terms of polynomials. And we know, in principle, what the open sets are. They are just the complements of the closed sets. But we need to look more into the structure of the open sets of the uh, of algebraic sets under the, the Zariski topology. Because what we will want to do in the future is, as I've said, understand these spaces intrinsically, so we want to know all sorts of subsets that we can get. So one specific and important class of open sets are the principal open sets. So uh, given an algebraic set x and a function f in its coordinate ring, the principal open subset, also called the distinguished open subset uf, is defined as the set of all points where this function f does not vanish. So it's the complement of the vanishing set of f. And the point is that if you have any open set, then it is a finite union of principal open subsets. So pause and think why this is true. The reason is that if u is open, then u is the complement in x of some closed set, the vanishing set of an ideal. And since all ideals are finitely generated, this will be some uh, complement to the vanishing set of these R polynomials. And this is exactly the following set. Um, and therefore, it is the union of the principal open subsets uf1 through ufr. And so, as far as the topology is concerned, this uh, collection of open subsets is enough to understand. If you understand this, you understand the open subsets. Um, this can be phrased for those of you who have uh, taken other courses in topology, that the principal open subsets form a base, or the basis for the Zariski topology on X. Now we want to define regular functions on open sets. So remember when you have an algebraic set X and a closed subset Z, uh, we defined the uh, coordinate ring of Z as the quotient of the coordinate ring of X by the vanishing ideal of Z. And the point is that you want to consider the restriction of functions on X to Z and then two functions will be, give, will be the same if their difference restricts to something that vanishes on z. This is why we quotiented this. Now, okay, let's try to do this, but why is it so important that z is closed? Let's take an open uh, set u and try to define it in the same thing, in, in the same way. So we would say that O of u is the quotient in, in this matter. But then we have to understand which functions vanish on an open set. And the problem is that if x is irreducible, which you have seen it often is, and if you take a non-empty open subset, then there is no function, uh, in no regular function on x that vanishes on all of u. Because remember, open subsets of irreducible sets are dense. So uh, the closure, the smallest uh, algebraic set containing u is x itself. And by nature of such functions, the function will have to vanish on all of x. To think about this further, think of the 
case where k is the complex numbers. So you have uh, an open set that is the complex plane minus a finite number of points. Well, if the polynomial is supposed to vanish on such a huge set, it must be identically zero. Uh, and so if we do this, then there will be no non-zero functions vanishing on our open set. And so we would get that the uh, coordinate ring of u is the same as coordinate ring of x. But this creates problems because we want functions that do not take zeros on u to be invertible. And we will not be able to do this. We need more functions on open sets. So we try a different philosophy. Open sets are different uh, from closed sets and require a different approach. And the approach is that look at your open set. Don't see it as a restriction, see it as an opportunity. Now, finally, you can divide by the things that become zero outside this open set. This you could not do. This is why in the whole, uh, when we defined, say, regular functions on affine space, on AN, they had to be polynomials because they couldn't have poles anywhere. And so now we can allow denominators that do not vanish on our open set. And we also want to define this in a local fashion. So we want to say that not that we allow only such denominators that never vanish anywhere on our open set, but now that we're at it, we want to say that around each point, you can express your function as a quotient of polynomials whose denominator doesn't vanish there. Because in the end, you want a property that is local. You want to use open sets as open neighborhoods and even though open neighborhoods are huge in the Zariski topology, it is better to have such a local notion. So we make the following definition. If you have an algebraic set X and an open subset U, a regular function of U still is a map from this set to the base field K with the following property. For any point A, there exists an open neighborhood, so this UA, I forgot to write, but it is assumed to contain A, so that in U of A, there are functions, well, so that there are polynomials F and G, or regular functions F and G, such that F doesn't vanish anywhere on U of A, and your map phi is the quotient of g with f in this um, neighborhood u a. So uh, now I've drawn the neighborhood in this intuitionistic fashion, but you see the point that you want to be able to locally write your function as a quotient of regular functions. And the set of all regular functions is denoted by O of U as usual, and it's a K-algebra under pointwise operations. So uh, pointwise multiplication, uh, pointwise addition, and pointwise action of scalars. Uh, this you can check for yourselves. Now this is good because it's local, but it's cumbersome because the polynomial, if we go back, the polynomial f varies with the point a. So these f and g, they depend on u a. And that is where one of the advantages of these principal open subsets comes in, because then you can fix the denominator globally. Namely, if uh, you look at the uh, coordinate ring of a principal open set, defined as in the previous slide, but now with the extra restriction that this open set U is in fact uh, a principal open subset, then your local definition becomes global, meaning that this uh, 
principal open set has the coordinate ring all quotients with powers of this f that defines the principal open set. Intuitively, this is good. This is what you want because the principal open set is defined as the set where f doesn't vanish. So somehow the only guaranteed function you know doesn't vanish there is f. And so that's the only thing you can divide by. I will leave the proof to a later occasion. It is not so trivial. But with this, we can now conclude today's lecture. We have a notion of open and closed sets um, in algebraic sets. And we know something about their algebra.